Okay, so I may have a little surprise here. Ugh, Amazon Prime Day. Um, I couldn't resist. It was just too good a bargain. Now I already have two sewing machines. I have my um, I have a Genome, which was my first sewing machine that I ever bought. It was so cheap, it was like £100 from Hobbycraft. And I keep it because it's really good at shearing. Um, but I also have my brother FS40, which is the one I use most, and that's digital. But it's just not, it's a good machine. It's a good beginner machine. It's just not very good at going through really thick layers. And I sew quite a lot of wool, like for capes and things. So I decided to take the plunge and I've got the brother HF27. The heavy duty one i think it's called like strong and tough so i thought i'd unbox it for you because you know i know you'll share my excitement just pull my jeans up um yeah so let's do this i have had this for like a week and i haven't opened it because i've been so tired with work that i just haven't had the energy to do this I didn't want to deal with polystyrene. <laughs> Wowzers. Polystyrene. Um, ooh. Okay, so we've got the little bag of important bits. Cover. I never use my sewing machine covers and it's terrible because I should use them because they get covered in dust. Here we go, let's uh, I'm rip a hole in the plastic so I can use the handle. And here she is. I've got the instruction booklet in there as well. So, oh, feels a good weight. Got the foot pedal. I'm quite loyal to Brother because I've my overlocker is a Brother overlocker. It's the uh, it's right here, so I can read off it. Three zero four DWT, and it's great. I love it. it. It gives me very minimal problems. I think there was one video I made where it was having a bit of an off day, but that was probably something I did, not the machine. This feels very sturdy. Like I actually really like it's. It's not digital, still got a good amount of stitches. Um, so it's got 27 different stitches, stretch and non-stretch, automatic buttonhole, great. Um, it just feels more sturdy than my digital one. Um, the digital one has 39 stitches, but I don't use half of them. So they're obviously surplus to requirements for me personally. Um, there's a lot of decorative stitches that I just don't really use. I love how they put this like blue tape everywhere to hold stuff closed for transit and stuff. Um, I love peeling it all off. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use it today because I am sewing today, but I'm sewing stretch velvet and of course I'm sewing stretch velvet. It's what I do, but I feel like um, I would rather, this is very like, oh, this is nice. So when you slide the compartment off where all your, um, your feet and things are, it like opens up like a little, and then you've got your little baggie of, feet and things that's nice because on the other one it doesn't do that it just you slide it off and the uh the bag's just right there so this has a little like secure compartment I do like that um get the last bit of this tape off there we go yeah 
I had a nightmare getting this delivered. Amazon were ridiculous. Frankly, I was furious. I'm obviously going to sell one of my others um, once I've got used to this one because I don't need all these machines. I do, like I say, I keep the genome because it's good at shearing and I can machine wind the bobbin with the shearing elastic and you can't do that on a lot of machines. And I've never been able to work out how to do shearing on my brother machine. So I keep my genome just for that. And also it's so old now um, and it was cheap anyway. I, I like to keep it as a spare. So if I ever have to send mine off to be repaired or serviced or whatever, I've got a machine that I can use as a spare. But I think I will sell my FS40 because, you know, it's a good machine. I haven't had it that long. I've probably had it two years, so quite a while actually, maybe longer than that, maybe three years, but it's still a really good machine and I think somebody will get a lot of use out of it, especially if they're a beginner or you know a fairly new sewist or just looking for a budget-friendly machine. Um, and this will become my daily machine now, but let's just take another look at her. And I think on Prime Day this was... 180 pounds reduced from like 270 or something so it's a bargain and i spent more than that on my other brother machine and i mean that's not like this is a heavy duty one so i i feel like this one will see me through now um a lot of uh just get this cardboard yeah I think this will see me through for a while now and eventually I would love to get like a Husqvarna or something um, or maybe a Benina but that's big money and I don't have that right now so for now I'm sticking with my brother machines and my budget friendly machines and yeah I'm excited to have a go on this I'll let you know how it goes six months later So I'm cozied up on my sofa right now because I am having the worst time of the month ever. Thank you, polycystic ovaries, again. Um, and I haven't been out of the house for a few days and also I haven't done any sewing because I've just been working. Um, but this weekend I want to crack on with the princess coat. I really want to get it done. But I cannot get my head around the adjustments I need to do to the bodice. So I'm looking at the size chart again. So it only goes up to a size 20. Um, so the high bust, my high bust is 43 inches, which puts me at a 16 on the size chart. My full bust is 51 inches which puts me between an 18 and a 20. However, I'm thinking if I go for the 16, which fits my high bust and should fit my shoulders and everything, and the full bust on that is 48 inches and then do a three inch full bust adjustment. But it'll be a one and a half inches, obviously, when I do the adjustment because it's you do it on half of the, the front. So you'll have it on the other side as well. So one and a half times two makes the three inches. The waist on the 16 is a thir is 38 inches and my waist is 48 inches. So, well, it fluctuates. It's usually between 46 and 48 inches, depending on the time of the month. Um, so I'd need to add in 10 inches at the waist. But I know if I do the full bust adjustment and when it adds into the waist, rather than closing that up again, if I leave it, and measure it it should be the same one and a half inches so three inches overall then I just need to add seven inches in and there are seven seams so you've got the front so the left and right front so that's two the left and right side fronts because it's princess seams so that's four the back left and right back side side back so that's six and then the back which wait the back might be on the fold 
So there's either going to be seven or eight seams, seven or eight pieces. Well, the back will have two side seams anyway, so I need to look at all the seams basically and figure out how much to add. But it's going to be seven inches divided by eight, I think. Um, so on under an inch. I can't do the maths in my head right now, but it'll be under an inch for each of the seams that I have to add it on. I think... I think I can I think I can do that. I think I can do it. The hardest part to fit will be the bust and the shoulders. And I think if I pick the size that fits my shoulders, that's my best bet and work out from there because I've got quite a small frame despite my size. My shoulders are quite narrow. My high bust is quite small compared to the rest of me. So I'm thinking if I fit it to my shoulders and my high bust, get a really nice fit there, fit the bust, which is easy enough to do. I can do a full bust adjustment. I've done it on a princess seam bodice before and it came out chef's kiss, perfect. As long as that fits, making the waist bigger is not a big deal. It's usually just a straight line and you're just making it bigger. And then I can grade out the skirt of the coat. I can grade it up three sizes so that it fits matches with the waist because that should put it at a 48 inch waist which is what I am doing and that would make the hips 60 inches which is what I am so I really do think that this can work <laughs> there's a lot of pieces to this pattern but I'm bearing in mind I'm not going to be touching anything up here so I don't need to change I don't need to grade up the hood or the collar or anything the shoulders the sleeves, hopefully, I won't need to grade them up. They're quite big sleeves. I'm doing the lantern sleeves. As long as my arm can fit through the armhole, then it, they'll fit me because they, they get bigger. So what I'm thinking is do the full bust adjustment, add, so full bust adjustment on a size 16, grade out the sides to... A 26 which is what I need so split the difference there and add it on and then make a mock-up see how that fits and if that fits then I can go on to grade up the skirt which is easy because it's like a it looks kind of like a circle skirt or a half circle skirt or something so all I'm really doing is just making it bigger it's quite a simple shape to make bigger. Um, just adding to the side seams. Easy. Grading out. It's just a straight line and just carry on adding sizes. As long as I can get the bodice fitting well, I'll make a mock-up then. So I'll make a mock-up, one sleeve, check the fit. If that works, then I'll maybe make the lining, the whole lining, and see if that fits well and then go on to my actual fabric. This is the plan. Okay, so I have done the full bust adjustment to the lining. So I've done, I've added in one and a half inches. This was difficult. <laughs> so I've what this is a massive full bust adjustment. So this is the size 16 H cup and I've added in a three inch, three inches full bust adjustment. So the size 16 H cup is a is for a f what was it 48 inch full bust i'm a 51 inch full bust so i've added three inches so one and a half inches because that makes three over both sides that has also added one and a half inches on each piece at the waist so that is three inches at the waist um this is the the bodice lining front so we've added the length needed to go over the extra that we've added into the bust there I've held it up against me because it was like this is a, a lot of a lot of length here like two and a half inches added in I was like is that going to be too long but I held it from my shoulder and it goes to my waist so 
it's obviously right. And if you think about it, it's got to get over the bust. So that would make sense. So I'm pretty confident these will fit. For the back... Oh, and then I added, because I needed to add... An, so basically, we've added three inches into the waist. We then need to add seven more inches into the waist because the waist of this pattern is 38 inches and my waist is 48 inches so I needed to add 10 inches total. The full bust adjustment already added three, one and a half on each piece so then I've added, I needed seven more so I've divided that by four so the four side seam pieces and that's 1.75 inches. So I've added a 1.75 inches here going up to nothing at the arm's eye because I don't want to I don't want to fiddle with the arm's eye. I want to leave that because I think that will fit me fine. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to fiddle with the arm's eye because I think that will fit me okay. I don't want to touch that unless I have to. You know what it's like when you start messing with the arm's eye, things get dangerous. <laughs> um well not dangerous, but you know. So then I've done the same on, let's get these out of the way. So that's the front. On the back then I've added the one and 1.75 inches to the side seam of the back lining. And this is made kind of a funny shape, like we've got a diagonal seam now. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, but we're going to give it a go. I guess even if I'd slashed and spread this, we still would have ended up with a diagonal seam. So it's fabric, it's fluid. We'll see what happens with that. It looks a bit weird, but you know, I've seen weird adjustments on my patterns and they've come out okay. And then on the back lining, we've not touched this at all because this attaches to this. So basically, this is like a princess seam again, and I've just treated this as it will be one. So we've added three inches to the back total, three and a half inches across the back, and three and a half inches across the front, plus another three inches on the bust adjustment at the waist. That is 10 inches. And I have measured across the seam line at the waist, and these are my little measurements here. These are in millimetres, just because it was easier with the ruler. And I've added them all up and it comes to 51 and a half inches, people. 51 and a half inches. And what did I tell you? My waist is 48 inches. I reckon that's going to fit me. And bear in mind that but the bodice lining doesn't even come all the way across to centre front. And this coat is supposed to have about, I think it said four inches of ease. So if it's already 51 and a half inches... Let me just get the the bodice centre front here. Match these up. And I reckon that's about... Well, let's measure people. Not measure people, but let's measure. Let's see. I was going to say I reckon that's about two and a half inches. And lo and behold, it's just over two and a half inches, which would make across there 50... What did I say? 51 and a half inches... And that will make it 54 inches across. But there's an overlap for the buttons. I reckon this is going to work, you know. I, I feel confident. Maybe I'm dumb. But I am going to cut these out. So this is the lining. I'm going to cut this out, sew it together and see how it fits me. And if it fits me, then I need to do the same adjustments to the front pieces and we're away. The only thing I'm concerned about is if we look at the centre front and then the centre, the bodice lining, line these up, we've got this extra length and I'm thinking, would I add another button? I think I'd probably add another button, wouldn't I? Because that's quite a lot of extra length on the waist. It's going to need another button, I'm thinking. But that's okay, so I'll have Instead of five buttons, I'll have six. Well, that's a nice number anyway, isn't it? I, that makes sense to me because I think if I don't add another button, you've got all this space that's going to gape, isn't it? And if I move the buttons down, it's going to be too open at the top. I, I think I'm going to add another button. I'm going, I'm going rogue on this one, people. But I think this is going to work, you know. I think this might work. This is the most challenging pattern I've ever had to adjust or do anything to. 
not only am I having to grade it up to my size, a full bust adjustment as well. I'm sewing with soft shell, which I've never sewn with before. I've never made a coat before. So many different techniques here. And I think it's going to work. Oh. Next step, lining muslin. Um, I've got so many like rubbishy bed sheets and things that I can use as a muslin to just mock this up. And if the lining works, then I think we'll be going on to cutting out the actual fabric. I might mock up the outer as well, just to be sure. So do the adjustments on the outer, the outer, like the, the main pattern pieces. Do a mock up of those as well. And then if that fits and closes over my bust and waist, I think we're good to go. All I'll have to do is adjust the skirt pieces, which should be really easy. I just need to extend them to match the waist. Um, and that's just a straight seam up the side, so I can just grade that out as far as I need. This might work, you know. <laughs> Day two of pattern adjustments. So I did all the lining pieces yesterday. So full bust adjustment on the side front and adding to the side seam. Um, obviously the corresponding full bust adjustment to the, the lining front as well. I've also done the adding to the side seam on the side back. Um, so that should take care of the, the waist. I have done the same to the main fabric pieces. So added to the side seam on the side bodice back, full bust adjustment to the front. I have added, because I've added so much length on the front, I've had to add an extra button because there's no way this amount of space at the bottom would stay closed without another button. I just know it won't. And that's going to be over my tummy as well. So we're going to need another button there. So I've, I've added another button. I've done it on both and made sure that I've um, spaced them out equally. So yes, uh, and this is the same length, the facing and the, the front. So that's all the pattern adjustments done for the bodice. I have now a pile, you're seeing all my stuff in my coffee table. So I have the skirt pattern pieces here, which this is all the skirt. And all I need to do is grade them up um, to make the waist bigger. So you can see this is not gonna be that difficult. I'll just extend it out and down. It should be pretty easy. Um, I'll do that to the lining and the, um, the outer. I also have a pile of pattern pieces here which don't need adjusting. This one has been adjusted, but these don't need adjusting. So the neck facing, uh, shoulder reinforcement, the back stay, the hood, um, and then the, the bottom pieces of the lantern sleeve. None of that needs adjusting because nothing that attaches to it has been adjusted. The only thing I have adjusted, let's get these out of the way, is the sash. So, and this was very easy. So this is the sash, sash piece that goes around the waist. And all I needed to do was add, grade it out to the 26, which is the, the waist measurement for me. So you can see from the 20, each of these increments is an inch. So I just added three inches. 26 and uh, yeah so that was the easiest adjustment I needed to do. The next thing I've done is cut out the sleeve pieces so we have here the lantern sleeve upper the lining and the outer fabric and I have measured from let me use my ruler so from the seam allowance from where the seam allowance ends so you know uh, five eighths of an inch in from the edge all the way around the seam allowance for the size 16 to check that it will fit my arm and it will. So I think it's like 24 inches. Pretty sure my upper arm, I'm gonna measure it again in a minute, is like 19 inches. So that's like five inches of ease in the sleeve. That is plenty. Even with a thick jumper, that's plenty. 
I just didn't want it being tight around my biceps. So Cleo's sleeping over there. So yeah, I think we're good to go. I don't think we need to adjust the sleeve. The arm size should fit. I've just checked that. Um, yeah, I think we're good to go with a mock-up. And what I want to do is do a mock-up of the bodice. So a full mock-up of the bodice. Um, let me turn this around. Now I'm speaking to you. So I want to do a full mock-up of the bodice first. Um, well, not full, but I want to do the, the bodice front and back and one sleeve just to check that it all fits okay and I think I'm going to do it with the outer pattern pieces rather than the lining because if the outer fits the lining is essentially the same it's just slightly shorter um, and it should because I've done the same adjustments to both I think I'm done with pattern adjustments might have to raise the bust apex because I normally have to do that on Gertie's patterns. Um, I can check that against the Barbara bodice, I think, because um, the Barbara bodice is a princess seamed bodice and I raised the bust apex on that. So I can check the curve and everything against that to make sure it's the same kind of curve. So I might do that as well and then make a mock up. And hopefully we'll have a well-fitting mock-up good enough to move on to the actual fabric. This is so nerve-wracking. So nerve-wracking. And I think when I move on to the actual fabric as well, I'm going to do the lining first because if it goes wrong, it's the lining is cheaper than the main fabric so I can buy some more and do it again. But yeah. Uh, this is scary. This is so scary. So many people have told me that they've been wanting to do this pattern for ages, but they haven't had the nerve to do it. And they're just waiting with bated breath for me to make mine. And I feel like I'm, I've am i set myself up such a massive challenge here because why aren't people doing this pattern? But hopefully I can show you that you can do it. I don't have a lot of pattern adjustment experience, but YouTube is my friend and a little bit of common sense and hopefully I've got a good outcome. We'll see. We'll see now. So I'm just reading through the princess coat instruction booklet because, you know, I feel like it's a good idea to read through all the steps before I start even sewing the mock-up just so I know what I'm doing. Look at this. Um, And there's 77 pages. And like, okay... Some of those pages are cutting diagrams and talking about what fabric to use and size chart and whatnot. But the majority of the 77 pages are instructions on sewing this coat. And I'm feeling very like, whoa. Uh, it's broken into like smaller steps. So I, I'm just going to like take my time with this. You know, once I've done my mock up, just start on the final coat and just just take my time with it. I can do a little bit each day. You know, I don't have to do masses in one sitting. Um, but it is quite overwhelming. And also I'm thinking about the mock-up now. So I was just going to use some old like bed sheets that I've got. They're like fleecy ones, so they're thicker than usual like bed sheets. I was going to use those to just do a mock-up of the lining. Um, but then I thought maybe I should actually do a mock-up of the outer um the outer of the coat to see how that fits because I want to make sure that it comes across properly where the, the buttons are going to go and everything um so maybe I should do that first um and then I was thinking maybe I should do a mock-up out of wool because I've got some wool that I was given well I ordered wool from a, a company and they sent the wrong one and they said I could keep the one they sent me uh, like if I wanted to pay a reduced price for it. So I was like, yeah, why not? It's wool. It's really nice. And it was like three meters and I got it for like five pounds or something. Um, but it's brown. It's like a really dark brown, which is not a color I would go for. But I'm wondering maybe I should make a mock up using that because it's closer in thickness and everything to the soft shell that I'm going to be using because I don't have any soft shell to do a mock up. And the wool is, you know, the thickness 
of coat material. So I'm thinking that would be better. And what I'm hoping I'll get is a wearable toile and that I'll be able to carry on and finish the wool version and have it as a, what I'm hoping is like the cropped version of the so princess coat but the crop version and maybe with the peplum on the bottom no hood but the shawl collar so I'm thinking if I mock up that and put a sleeve in because I do the um the bell sleeves on that as well not the lantern sleeves but the sleeve the upper sleeve portion is the same for both so I'm thinking if I do the bell sleeves on that because I wanted to make that anyway and yeah, okay, the brown fabric is not what I would have chosen, but it's going to be a cute jacket if it fits, which it should do. The measurements are right, so I'm thinking I might do that. I hope you're enjoying this angle right now. <laughs> Just shows that I do have a double chin. There we go. So, um, yeah, that's the plan anyway. And then I could find a nice lining material for the wool jacket and I have a nice vintage style brown wool jacket which will be really cute and I don't know what I'd wear with it on the bottom a, a pencil skirt I guess maybe I could make a pencil skirt in the same color as the lining fabric or something but that could come later and that could be my practice run for the stanic skirt which I want to make um the Stanic pencil skirt, which I do want to make, but I know I'm going to have to do like a full seat adjustment on that because your girl's got a lot of junk in the trunk, as you know. Anyway, these are just my musings. I'm just thinking out loud. So I'm here again trying to adjust the waist of this pattern because what I had done was added a chunk there and it was just a big diagonal on the side seams and I don't like it. It looked too much. It was like too big an adjustment and I could just tell it wasn't going to work. So what I thought I'd do is split it between all the seams on the bodice. So it's a princess seam bodice. So you've got side seams and then the front princess seams and the back princess seams. So I'd read somewhere that you just... Harry Potter that you just um, split it between six because you've got two front princess seams two back princess seams and then the side seams but then I was thinking to myself but the pattern pieces there's more than six seams so say this is the front princess seam so you've got the side seam the princess seam lines so this piece for example this pattern piece has the side seam and then the princess seam. So that's two places you can add. Then the front piece has two princess seams there as well, which is two places you can add width. And then the side again is two places you can add width. So that's six. And then you've got six on the back as well. So that's 12. So surely I need to be dividing my measurement by 12 and adding a bit to both sides of the pattern piece like I've tried to done here, do here, but then I figure this is needs to be half this because I can add the other half on the other side of the princess seam and then suddenly it doesn't seem like such a massive adjustment. Am I going mad? But I feel like that's right. I mean, I'm going to do a mock-up anyway and whatever I do here, I can take it off again. But... I think that is correct. <laughs> and as you can see, I keep my sewing machines and cats under the table when I'm not using them. But I think I'm going to use the cat shortly. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. She's a menace, don't be fooled. The devil comes in many forms. So today is the day I finally start sewing the mock-up for the jacket, um, which is also going to serve as the mock-up for the coat because it's the same pattern pieces. I've adjusted the rest of the pattern pieces um, and I've just woken up not that long ago. I'm having some stomach issues at the moment. Um, as well as having PCOS, I also have IBS. 
yay me and that is having a flare up as well at the moment so um I, I manage that very well normally I don't have any symptoms for months and months and months and then one little thing can throw it off and it was Christmas and a supplement I've been taking which I'm going to stop taking I was taking magnesium but it seems that the dosage is just too high for me so um it's given me quite undesirable side effects so I've stopped taking that and I'm just waiting for it to sort of get out of my system now and feel better but my tummy is so bloated and uncomfortable right now but we persevere so I'm going to cut out a mock-up of the bodice I'm going to do one sleeve um and then the front and back bodice obviously the whole bodice but only one sleeve because I don't need to put two sleeves in I'll just do the right sleeve because that's my sorry my hands in the way there I'll just do the right sleeve because that's my chunkiest arm you can see I've got a lot of bingo wingage but uh it's definitely bigger on the right side so I think we'll check it fits the right arm and if it does we're good to crack on with cutting it out in wool and I'm so excited for that because that green wool is just chef's kiss. I made a, a cape out of it before, the Vogue V9288, which is one of my favourite patterns ever. I've made three of those. Um, my second one was in the green wool. I originally bought it to make the, the charm pattern swing coat, um, which is a Patreon pattern. But I just, that kind of boxy coat, I just don't think it's going to suit me. I am much more um a fitted garment person so i think the waiting out waiting and the tackling the princess coat when i feel more confident is definitely the right option so yeah that's what i'm going to do this video is going to be quite long and there's a lot of talking but i'm hoping there's going to be two amazing coats at the end of it so a jacket peplum jacket and a waterproof coat and it'll all be worth it and a lot of people have been commenting on my instagram posts saying that they can't wait to see how this turns out because they've wanted to do this, but they're too scared. So I am trailblazing for you guys. I am hoping that you can see me do it. And the fact that I'm so far off the size chart and, you know, I've had to add 10 inches to the waist. OK, so if I can do this, you can do this. Let's go. Okay, so I'm about to start sewing my mock-up. I've cut it out of this just grey. I know it's really crumpled and creased, but like, just ignore that. It was an old fitted sheet. And yeah, so I've cut it out of this. Um, it seems to have a little bit of stretch on the length wise, but that's fine. No stretch on the width wise, which is good because I want to make sure that this doesn't stretch because the material I'm making the final thing out of doesn't stretch so it can't stretch around my body because I need to check the fit but anyway I'm about to sew the center back seam I, I've just cut out my outer pieces out of this and just to check the fit I'm going to use my new machine uh, for the first time so it's got some dirt on it this has been sitting in my house since July very grubby I need to wipe it down Oh my god, there's so many marks on it. I've just noticed now. I'll give it a clean. Yeah, it's been sitting in my house since July. So I filmed that unboxing part in July. <laughs> and I haven't I haven't even tried it because I've had so much going on and like I've been ill a few times and I just haven't been doing as much sewing as usual and it's just been sitting under my desk waiting to be trialed and I wanted to use it on like a, a decent fabric because it's a strong and tough machine so it should be good for like thick fabrics like wool etc so I'm going to try it today I've threaded it up it's got a needle threader which is awesome so um it's got this little thing that you pull down and you put your thread through it and then you just push it through the eye of the needle and it pushes your thread through the eye of the needle or pulls the thread back through the eye of the needle, sorry. It's got like a little hook that pulls it through. Amazing. Amazing. It's got 27 different stitches, which is enough. I don't need loads. My other brother machine has got so many stitches and I barely use any of them. But this has got stretch stitches and regular stitches. It's got a couple of decorative ones. It does a buttonhole, automatic buttonhole. Um, and then, yeah, an assortment of stretch stitches, including a triple stretch stitch, regular zigzag 
both sides. You could do it zigzag point in either way and some other decorative stretchy stitches. Anyway, I'm about to just sew my centre back seam on this machine now because this is just a straight seam. I also like that it's got markings on it for the seam allowances and to guess what? It has five eighths of an inch. Thank you, brother. My other machine doesn't have that. It has markings, but I have to use the two marking for five eighths of an inch with the needle in the center. Whereas this one, the needle is to the left, but it actually says five eighths of an inch. Yes, no more guessing my seam allowances. I know it's lazy and I should have just put a piece of tape on there to like make sure I was doing it accurately, but you know, I've never gone wrong so far. So anyway, you are about to witness me sewing a seam on my new machine now. So let me move the camera a little bit. Well, so you, I don't know if I can do it so that you can see me and the machine. Let me just double, let me just pause a moment. Okay, I think this horrible angle is the best we're going to get, but I really need a new tripod and like camera setup. That's something I'm going to treat myself to. It was new sewing machine first. I bought this in Prime Amazon Prime Day and paid for it over six installments, so it wasn't too bad, you know, but I, yeah, I'm excited to try this. Okay, you're going to be trying this with me. So I've got my needle in the fabric and here we go. Oh my God, that's so quiet compared to my other machine. Like, I think I could talk to you and sew at the same time. It, it's not, it's not so loud that you can't hear me. It feels really like robust as well and sort of sturdy. I, I love that. I'm just, it's so smooth. I just can't get over how quiet it is. I forgot to backstitch at the start, but I'll do it at the end. Okay, so we've got this little lever here that I think if you press it, it does backstitch. Put the needle in. Oh, that didn't work. I wasn't pressing it hard enough. Hold on, let's come back here. Put the fabric. Put the needle in. Yeah. I was too delicate with it. <laughs> okay. I like that the uh, the see the thread cutters on the side as well, not the back. I didn't adjust the settings. I just left them. That looks pretty good to me. That's, that's, you know, I will, I will never, I will never touch the settings of this machine. Look at that. <gasps> that's so nice. I never get a really nice seam like that. Oh my God. Yes. 100% happy with this purchase. Great. I'm going to carry on and sew up the, the bodice now. And I cut out both sleeves just because I thought I had the fabric folded and it fitted. So I was like, I'm just going to cut out both sleeves. So I cut out both sleeves and I'm going to sew this up now, attach everything. So I guess I'll do my back princess seams first. Um, sorry, <laughs> I'll do my back princess seams first because they're less of a an issue in terms of getting them to fit. Um, so I'll sew those together and I'm not going to like do all the clipping into the curves and all that rubbish because this is really just a tester but obviously when I do my final piece I will do it carefully and I will clip my curves and stay stitch and everything so this for now I'm just going to just crack on and yeah enjoy my new sewing machine I'm so excited by this oh. so it's the brother hf27 just in case anyone wants to know I'm so happy with this definitely an upgrade from my my other one which was the uh, FS, 
I can't see. Hold on. <laughs> FS40, that's it, FS40. I keep my machines under the table. FS40 is the one I was using. This is a definite upgrade from that. I'm very happy with this so far. I will let you know throughout the course of sewing my jacket, hopefully. Okay, so here we have the mock-up with one sleeve in. That sleeve is put in terribly. I didn't ease up the sleeve cap properly. I just wanted to get it in and see what it looked like. But it's in. I swear that sleeve doesn't fit in that armhole, though. <laughs> um, it's fitting Veronica, which is a good sign because she is my body double, in inverted commas, but she's actually a bit fatter than I am. So it's fitting her quite well. You can see on the back, oh, I'm, I don't want to throw the P word around, but that's kind of perfect fitting on the back, I think. Um, obviously the collar needs work, but it's just to see what it looks like at the moment. So this will be all pressed. There'll be a, obviously a, the facing on there as well, but it looks good. Did I actually grade up a pattern properly and fit it properly? A coat? Never. Let me try it on me. Okay, excuse my messy hallway. This was the only way I could fit this. This is, so I'm wearing typical clothes for me. This sleeve is not in properly, but I just wanted to check it fits my arm. And it does! And there's loads of room in there, so my other arm will be fitting in. Um, maybe I should give my arm a name like Sarah Ray Vargas does. She calls her Big Bertha. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like buttons. So the buttons will start here. That seems good to me and go down. I'm, I'm going to have four buttons because um, when I graded it up, it was a, uh, this is quite hard to try this mock up on because it's fleecy fabric. It's getting stuck to my clothes. You can see the sleeves not in properly, but it's in enough. Good enough, as Rachel Maxey always says. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. I think it's got the, the crossover at the front. There's room in here around the waist. It's fitted on the bust. But whatever I wear would be quite fitted on the bust anyway. I don't tend to wear quite, I don't tend to wear baggy clothes. Sorry, you can't see me. But I'm, I'm happy with this. This princess seams feel like, so these are the side seams. Princess seams feel like they're in the right place. Side seam is in the right place. What are we thinking? I think I've done it. Have I done it? Have I actually done it? Have I actually done this? Bust point seems right. I need to press it because, you know, I didn't. I, th I think this is good enough to move on to a mock-up with my fashion fabric now with the wool and the let me just angle you up a bit damn it <laughs> okay so I think this is good enough now to move on to my wool and fancy lining fabric that I've got and to make a jacket and see how that fits when it's made out of the actual wool I'm, I'm conscious of space but I do feel like There will be enough room because if I hold it over like that there is room you know it's not skin tight I can get my hand in even under my bust so with the thicker fabric and the lining this is definitely gone wrong this sleeve but I would use Gertie's technique of using the um, the bias strip to ease it in on wool because I just shoved it in the armhole and the notches wouldn't match or anything and I didn't change the armhole or the sleeve so they should match. It was just me. I didn't do the easing properly. But yeah, I think um, 
I'm happy with this. <laughs> just a little update. I'm on my way upstairs to go to bed. Um, I just need to grade up the peplum. So that's what these pieces here are. I've cut out the lining, which is this lovely uh, pale green floral Havana satin. And then I've cut the main pieces out. You can see those there. <laughs> Cleo in the kitchen. Cleo! It's bedtime. <laughs> um, I've, yeah, the main pieces are cut out there. So it's just the peplum. I need to cut those out of the wool. The um, lining, or the facing, sorry, and the outer. I hope I've got enough wool left. And I've also just got to cut out the sleeve facing, the bell sleeve facing out of the wool. I hope I've got enough wool left, but that's where we're at for the jacket version. And it is Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. So tomorrow I want to, when I finish work, grade up this, these bits. Don't bang on the door, please. Grade up these bits here and um, cut them out. And then I need to cut out all the interfacing as well. I want to be ready to start sewing on Saturday. Hopefully I can make a really good start and get something resembling a jacket. And once I know it's going to fit me properly, I can move on to the soft shell coat. It's very exciting. Okay, so I'm just grading up the peplum. And what I've done is added the same amount to each piece because they correspond to the bodice pieces. So I added to the waist and tapered out to nothing on the peplum back. I did the same on both sides of the peplum side back. On the peplum side front, I did the same on both sides, but then also added the one and a half inches that we did in the full bust adjustment, so three inches with both sides. So one and a half inches there, one and a half inches on the other side. And then I added a bit to the waist of the peplum front, tapering out to nothing. And I did the same to the peplum facing, but I cut it at the notches. So I slashed and spread it at the notches basically and added in the same amounts. And then added in the one and a half inches to the peplum side front like I have here. And then I thought, I'll just pin it together. I'll pin the peplum pieces together and then put the facing against it to check that it all matches. And I've spent ages like truing my seams and everything. So here is my peplum facing. And I put that on there. And it is perfect. Like, what? I've actually done this. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? I've actually done this. I've graded up the whole jacket, including the peplum. Like, who is she? Who is she who didn't know what she was doing and has actually done it? I've actually done it. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. My first mistake. So I was trying so hard playing pattern Tetris with the remainder of the wool to get the peplum on there. And I also needed to cut out the sleeve facing. I mean, look, this is what I have left. Just this little pile of scraps and there's no big pieces in there so I've tried really hard and I did it but I had to do the peplum facing rather than cutting it on the fold I've had to cut two halves and then I'll join them with a seam allowance at centre back this will be underneath so you won't see it and I forgot to add seam allowance because I'm an idiot. So at centre back, there's no seam allowance now. So what I've had to do is put a little note here to remind myself to join it with the scantest seam allowance ever. I'll just overlock them together right at the edge and hope that the rest of the peplum, because a lot of it's on the bias, it should stretch enough to match the waistband still. But it's not ideal, but I'm hoping it will be OK. But to be fair, that's my only mistake and I don't have enough fabric left to cut them again unless I piece it completely and cut out the peplum in like multiple pieces, the, the facing, which I don't really want to do. So I'm just going to join them on the overlocker with a very scant seam allowance and hope that it will stretch. I'm just cutting out the last pieces of my peplum, the outer wool. Um, 
and then everything's cut out apart from the interfacing which I will then do there's not that much that needs interfacing really but I'll do the interfacing and then I'm ready to start sewing the jacket finally and as soon as I've got enough done that I know it's going to fit me properly I will start cutting out the coat I'm so nervous about this Ugh. I've got you propped up against my machine because I've I've finished cutting out everything. I've just got to cut the back stay out of some muslin, but I need to find my, my muslin. It's under this desk somewhere. I just need to go through the box. But I thought I'd have a practice run of a bound buttonhole. I've never done them before. I made a bound buttonhole! Look at it! I made a bound buttonhole! I made a bound buttonhole! <laughs> I can't believe it and I measured it and everything so my button does come through <gasps> I made a bound buttonhole like what I've never done it before it was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be I followed Gertie's um tutorial on the on, she's got a YouTube video for making a crop version of the princess coat and she shows you how to do it It's such an easy thing to follow and Yeah, I mean it doesn't look great from the back, but that will all be covered up inside the jacket in like the facing will go there and then the lining will go there um, No, just the facing sorry, so the facing you have to do the same process but not making the the lips of the buttonhole you see the little lips of the buttonhole there you don't make those with the facing you just put a piece of organza over the back and what i did was i bought these little gift bags off amazon because i don't have any organza and i thought these would be perfect if i cut them cut the top off and cut them in half each one gives me enough organza for two buttonholes so and they were like two pounds I know I shouldn't buy stuff off Amazon, but I didn't want to buy organza. Like, I'm not going to use it for anything else. So this was a, a quick solution. Um, yeah, they're like little... Just little baggies. It's probably not proper organza anyway, but it just helps finish the buttonhole nicely on the back. So, yeah, each one of those is big enough to cover the buttonhole. I'll just cut the top off, cut the cut the edges off and then I've got a little rectangle of organza to use on the back of my buttonholes on the on the um the facing piece I'm so excited these look so good and yeah okay it's a little bit wonky but this was my first go and I'm really happy with it I'm really happy with it I'm super happy so I'm going to mark them out on my jacket front now I need to do four so yeah, mark them out on my jacket front, four of those, and then get cracking on them. I'm so happy with those. Now the scary part is cutting into my coat. The scary, well, I haven't even started assembling the coat yet because you do this first. The scary part is um, once you've sewn around the shape of the buttonhole, cutting into the buttonhole, that bit is not so scary because as long as you're careful and you don't cut through the stitching it's fine so i'm not worried about that it was the forming of the the buttonhole itself like the little lip bits and hand sewing all around that i thought i was going to muck up but look i think that's quite good I'm happy with that. If that was on my coat, and obviously the button will be over the top, so you won't really see it that much anyway, I'd be really chuffed and be like, I made those buttonholes. Oh. Oh. Okay, let's do this. Four times i got to do this. Let's go. So I thought I'd show you what I'm doing. So I've sewn my buttonhole patches right sides together. Um, so I, I did this in one long strip and then I've cut them to separate them afterwards. So you just basically, I marked my buttonholes on the wrong side, put the, f the strip of fabric, so like a strip 
right sides together on the back there and I pinned it just to make sure that it was covering the buttonholes and then I sewed around the outer edge of each buttonhole and count the stitches on the end so that they're all the same you know so you make sure it matches so all of mine were like four stitches along the end and now I'm cutting them open so I've done two so I thought I'd show you the rest because there are lots of tutorials out there but maybe you want to see me do it so I'm just the only scissors I've got are these massive fiskers which are really sharp so it looks scary but I'm just I have more control if I go to the go quite far in with the blades and just do a little snip just to get through all the layers of fabric so that's gone through both it's only a tiny little slit so it's gone through both the main and the patch and then I'm snipping to almost the end but not quite both ways almost the end but not quite and then at the ends we're snipping into the corners so what I do I just put the I don't know if you can see that I put the corners of my scissors so they're not even touching the corner so I can't go through the stitching because they don't even reach there so I'm just a, a little bit before snip into the corners snip and then on the other side did have some thread snips and I don't know where they've gone but they probably wouldn't get through this wool there we go so once you've done that you can then push the fabric patch through the buttonhole pull it all through nice and open and then you can sort of flatten it out so you've got a nice little window there and then what I'm doing is just pinning that open for the time being just so I can show you that they're open and then you will steam them with the iron don't press them flat because you want the you want to be able to form the lips of the buttonhole but if you just steam them open it just makes them easier to work with because you can see they naturally just want to sort of pull through to the other side again but if you put a bit of steam on, they'll behave. So I'm just going to do my last one. As long as you're careful you can't really do this wrong she says famous last words this is the scary part is cutting into your jacket and if I mess this up there we go. I don't have any spare fabric you like I was playing pattern piece Tetris for ages and I had to do the same with my interfacing. So some the face like the collar facing is like Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster on the back because the interfacing I had to use scraps because I didn't have enough. Um I'd bought weft interfacing for another project. It was when I made a Presley shirt for one of my ex-boyfriends, and um yeah, I didn't have enough really to cut out the pieces there we go so there's all my buttonholes and you can see on the right side they're all lovely equally spaced I had to, there's only meant to be three but I added one because I lengthened the pattern so much with the full bust adjustment that it would have been gaping open and a few people have said that you should have an odd number of buttons but I don't mind four it's not going to bother me so you know and th this one's going to be up close to where the collar is anyway so this is where the collar will fold back i think it's going to look really nice and then i've got these buttons so the pattern calls for one and an eighth inch buttons but i've got these vintage buttons and they're an inch so i've measured my buttonholes to be just a quarter of an inch bigger so that they will go through 
I think this is going to look so nice. Mm. I'm going to go and press these open then and then we come to forming the, the buttonhole and hand sewing. Okay, so I've steamed these. You can see they're sort of staying open on their own now. I didn't press them flat because you don't want that because you need to manoeuvre them to, to make the, the lips of the buttonhole like that really. Um, and then on the other side then you'll see you've got your little buttonhole lips. <laughs> I hate calling them lips but so the way Gertie does this is she goes from the right side she gets her fingers behind and just moves the fabric down to form the lip. <coughs> Excuse me I've picked up a nasty cold. Um, so yeah so she forms one lip and probably best to do both at the same time because you want them to be even. This is quite fiddly. I don't want one to be bigger than the other. The mistake I made with my test run was that I made the top one too small. It's got cat hairs here, it's so annoying. So I think I'm going to There we go. So I've got my top lip formed and then I've threaded a needle. So we're going to come up from the back through the seam allowance. Uh, into the seam, sorry. And this is fiddly at first. There we go. So my needle's coming up through the, I don't know if you can see that, it's coming up through the, the seam between the lip and the buttonhole. And then she does a pick stitch to secure the lip. It's like stitching in a ditch. So you come up, so you go behind where the needle just came out. So behind where the needle came out and then come up in front, in the ditch. Just making sure you've got your lip formed correctly all the way along. There we go. So you can see we've got a buttonhole lip there and then when I make the bottom one to match it, you've got your buttonhole. So I'm just going to carry on and make these. Um, I must remember to make the top lip a bit bigger. I keep making it a bit smaller and then the bottom one's slightly larger. The difference is minimal, so it's it's not really a problem, but I need to just work on that. <laughs> but this is my first time doing these and I'm quite proud of myself. So yeah, I'm gonna carry on with these and I will report back when they're all done. So I've got my four buttonholes. They definitely get better as, uh, as you go down. But I'm happy with those considering they're the first ones I've ever done. The next thing we need to do is secure the little triangles that we snipped. Secure those to the patches. So we're just going to go over those on the sewing machine and then we can press these and hopefully they'll come out looking really really nice. So I'm just stitching these to the buttonhole patch. Buttonhole is going to stay closed nicer on that one. So yeah, I'll do that to all four, press them, and then we've got our buttonholes. So I'm going to go and do that, and then we'll come back and start assembling the jacket. Look. Look at those buttonholes. They're a thing of beauty. I'm so happy with them. They're not perfect, but I made them. I'm very pleased with them. I think this one's the best one. Oh, look at that. Very even, very even. Right, and now we start assembling the jacket, the bodice. 
So this is the state of play at the end of today. So I've got the bodice front assembled and drying on Veronica because the um, the collar needs to form. Um, I have accidentally ironed a crease into this, so I will I will do that again and get rid of that. Um, the back is assembled. I've got the collar facing here to attach to the lining, which is all here, and the, the neck facing. I need to cut the back stay out of muslin next, and that will um, attach to the back. So that's my next step. I've got the sleeve and the facing here, and then the peplum, and then these are the pattern pieces I don't need anymore because I've finished with them. <sighs> this is a big project. We're going to need a bigger boat. So I'm back, it's a few days later. I've actually been ill again. Um, I was starting to feel ill when I was filming. Well, I have been feeling ill for a couple of weeks, um, just having like dizzy spells and whooshing in my ears. And I was like, what's going on? Then I had a pretty horrible bout of health anxiety where I was having panic attacks every night because I managed to convince myself that there was something seriously wrong with me. Turns out, this week it all came out. I've had a sinus infection that was affecting my ears and still is affecting my ears because the tinnitus is loud. Um, and yeah, that's why I sound a bit congested because I am. Um, the last two days have been horrendous. I've basically stayed in bed. Today I feel a lot better. I had a full night's sleep last night, so I do feel a lot better, um, but I'm not on top form, so... Yeah, but I'm going to do a bit of sewing anyway. Um, I just thought I'd show you. I've just taken a pattern piece off um, some fabric. And I keep my pattern pieces, my patterns in these little plastic wallets. They're like super cheap. And I've got a little Dymo machine where I can do the label. Um, it's run out or it's not working properly at the moment. So I need to come up with a different solution. But um, I put the name of the pattern on there. And then these take up very little space. And I can put them in, I've got like a little wheelie trolley and I put them in the top and I can just go look through all the ones that I have. And yeah, I, I really like these for storing pattern pieces. I can keep them all flat and tidy and it encourages me to put them away properly because you have to fold them to get them in here. But yeah, I recommend these. Um, you can get like packs of 10 for like two quid or something. They're super cheap. Anyway, where we're up to, we had assembled the front of our jacket, steamed the collar into shape, and now I have assembled the the back. Look at those princess seams. And now we're going to put in the back stay, which is cut out of muslin, and is just to stop the, sh the back sort of stretching out of shape over time. So I have got my back stay, I cut it out of uh, calico because the muslin I have is very, very thin, but this is calico. So you can see there's like no stretch in this. So this will hopefully do its job. So we're just gonna put that into the back um, with a long stitch length. And this will basically hold, help it hold its shape. This is bigger. This is bigger than the... How is this? How is this? How is this? How is this possible? How is it bigger? <laughs> it's probably me. I think it's my cutting. <laughs> anyway, I am going to sew this in now and then the next step is to attach the front and back bodice together at the shoulders and the neckline, I believe. And then I believe. <laughs> and then um, I think then we start working on the facings and the lining, we're getting there. <laughs> okay, so I've put in the back stay. So this will stop the back from stretching out now. I've clipped the neckline because we're now gonna be joining this to the front bodice. Um, so I need to get the front bodice off Veronica. Here we go. So it's quite confusing. This, I feel like a mummy, like a sarcophagus. This now needs to be joined to the, the neckline of the back. 
I'm not sure I'm well enough to be doing this today, but we persevere. Um, we persevere. So I'm going to try and join these together now and hope that I do it correctly. I think I will. I've done this once before on my twirl, but for some reason it's confusing me now. Let me look at the instructions. Okay, so we have what is resembling a jacket now. So back and sides are all joined, shoulders are joined. I'm going to try it on because it's at this point that if it's not going to fit me, then I've got a problem and I need to sort it out. So I can always let the side seams out a bit. This is very hard to get on without aligning. Yeah, I can let the the side seams out a bit if I need to, but I think this will be okay. People were saying that when I made my first mock-up, yeah, there's room in the bus there. Yeah, when I made my first mock-up, they were saying, oh, but um, I'm not wearing a proper bra by the way so I think this is going to be good actually there's a bit of room in there still if I was wearing a bra my boobs would be higher so just that's where the apex is so it will fit um, normally I wouldn't be wearing a jumper this thick so people were concerned that I'd be wearing like loads of layers under it. That's not me. I very easily overheat, so I don't wear a lot of layers. There's still room in here. I think this is gonna be good. I can see the vision. I'm just heading up to bed, but I thought I'd show you where I got to today. So, both sleeves are on. I was going to film the process, but it was quite complicated because I was using the bias strip method. Um, so that's where you sew a piece of bias, a, a bias strip of the fabric to the sleeve cap and stretch it as you sew it. So it automatically gathers the sleeve cap down. Um, it didn't gather it down enough for me to fit in the arm side, but I was able to pull the threads up and gather it a little bit more. And it was much easier than trying to just put gathering stitches in the wool because that wasn't cooperating at all. So you can see I've got lovely, smooth sleeve caps now. No puckers or anything. I haven't pressed them yet, but they are pucker free. So yeah, both sleeves are in and I did pick stitching I think it's called pick stitching for the first time ever and I really like that it was very therapeutic and very quick I like it so yeah both of those are done and uh, next is to sew the peplum but I'm very tired and I'm going to bed because I have work tomorrow and I'm still not well so I want to make sure I'm well rested um, this is becoming a thing of beauty though I can't stop looking at it <gasps> the shoulders impeccable sit down yeah that, that's my boob get stop making biscuits on my boob <laughs> sit down ow <laughs> not on the boob thank you Sit down. Oh my gosh. Stop making biscuits. <laughs> okay, so it's Sunday morning. It's the 4th of February. And I'm up 
it's not even eight o'clock yet, but I really want to get this jacket finished today. I would like to get this finished today. Excuse me, I'm recording a video. You're very loud. <laughs> I'd like to get it finished today so I can move on to cutting out the soft shell coat. Also, I had some red wool delivered. Um, you can see it there on top. And I've ordered some satin for lining. It's like a pale green with the floral print. Um, that was from Night and Fabrics, the lining. £2.50 a metre. Can't go wrong. And that wool was only £5 a metre. Um, and I bought that from, I think they're called Westland Sewing Centre on Facebook. Um, the lady Wendy often has good deals on fabric. And yeah, so I, I asked her for six metres of that. Um, so I'm very excited. So when I have finished with this coat series, I will have the cropped, so the princess coat short version with the peplum made from wool. I'll have a full length princess coat version made from wool. And then I'll also have a full length princess coat with a hood made from soft shells that'll be water resistant so all my coating needs will be taken care of by the princess coat pattern i do kind of want to make a transparent waterproof coat just like a mac because i've seen lots of people well there's a place that makes them to order online they're really cute and I really want one because then you can see your amazing dresses underneath. So I might try and make one of those in the future. But for now, this will solve my coat issues. So yeah, excited to get started again today. The peplum is on. Of course, it looks like hot garbage on Emmy because she's skinny. But it looks like hot garbage on Veronica because she's too fat and her boobs are too small. So <laughs> not too fat. I'm not fat shaming my dress form but she's fatter than me and her boobs are too small so she's not going to do it justice it's not going to look good until it's on me i fear well it's not a fear it's a it's a hope but anyway yeah so peplum's on happy with it fitted perfectly i did my calculations correctly so i'm sewing in my fluffy onesie <laughs> um i'm about to start on the facing unit and then it's just the lining and then i'm done so you can really see how I had to Franken interface these pieces because I was so short on interfacing. Look at all the little scraps I had to use to put together to, to interface it. But you know, it's done the job and that's why we don't throw away our scraps of interfacing. Okay, so I had to go and look at the video that Gertie's done for the princess coat to get my head around attaching the neck facing to the the, the collar facing because it's it's quite complicated anyway in doing that I realized that I should have put in the shoulder reinforcements already the interfacing fortunately they were easy enough to put in so basically they're just in here uh, there so you just put them sort of here and it was easy enough to put it in even though I'd already sewn the back bodice to it. It does say to do it before you sew the back bodice to it, but fortunately it was okay to go in. Um, I would have wangled it anyway, but yes, so they're in. So now I am working on the collar again. So let me show you, let me angle you down. Okay, so I got, I was getting quite confused with this. I had to look back at the video. So what you do is you put stay stitching around the shorter curve of the collar and clip into it about every half an inch so that you can effectively straighten this out to sew it because you're attaching this around this. So you need the flexibility and that's why we've clipped here because then we can open this out to be straight as well. So I really struggled to get my head around this but there's little circle marks that I've marked with tailor tacks here. I don't know if you can see them and they need to match with these pivot points. So I'm gonna pin those first. So once I've done that then, I might just mark this with my 
my pen instead because then I can take the tailor's tacks out. They do get in the way a little bit and they get trapped in the seams sometimes and I don't want that. There we go. And then this side as well. There we are. Yeah, there we go. So we're matching these. So this matches to this one here. I'm just going to put a pin. And then this one matches to this one. And it looks like it's not going to fit around this neck at all but I just watched Gertie do it so okay so next we're gonna pin the rest of the neckline so center back I think that's the middle she did say in the video that this is the most complex part that threw off the testers and everyone so you know I'm gonna forgive myself for getting a little confused and if by me showing you how to do it it helps someone then great I think the main issue I had was the sort of understanding which bit of the from the instructions which bit of the the facing attaches to the um, the collar and it was just confusing me. I think this goes along here now. Yes. And it will fit. Huh. Okay, so this is where we are right now. So the peplum's on, the facing's on. Obviously it looks like garbage because I haven't understitched or anything. And the fa it's, the peplum facing's loose. Um, but I've just put it on the dress form for now just to see how the shawl collar is looking. And the green is, is greening. <laughs> I like it. It's giving Slytherin. It's giving arsenic. No, no. <laughs> I don't think that's the colour of arsenic, but it's giving green. <laughs> oh my god, sewing princess seams for a large bust in satin? <laughs> Horrible. Absolutely awful. Now, I don't even have the energy to press these, but they took so much, like so much wrangling and this satin i mean look how red my face is that's stress this satin has no give whatsoever whereas the wool a little bit of stretchiness in it a little bit of give so you could kind of move the you know make it fit but this this i never want to do this again what am i doing Making another coat with the satin lining, yeah? And then another one. Uh -huh. So it's the 8th of Feb. Not the 9th. I told you I changed the calendar a day early. Um, but it's the 8th of February and I've assembled the lining. Not as neat as the main, very hard to sew the princess seams on this satin. I've done the best I can. Um, there's very minimal puckering. I set the sleeves in again, did the best I could. Minimal puckering. And then the back has this nice pleat in it. 
just for ease of movement. Again, princess seems minimal puckering. Um, I'm loving these fabrics together, though. I can't wait to get it inside. But yes, this is uh, where we are. We're so close to finishing. So close to finishing. So what I need to do now... Oh, I, I can't remember if I told you. I pressed the wool with the clapper. Amazing. Oh, look at this. Little bits of uh, frayed fabric from the lining. <gasps> no! I'm covered in it as well. But yeah, so the jacket is pretty much all assembled. I need to do the bound buttonholes on the facing. So on this side, I need to do those. I need to put the lining in. And then I need to attach the buttons. But it's coming along well. Good morning. The sun is shining. I am feeling pretty good. I slept well last night. I'm wearing all red, red all over, including the trousers, because it's the first day of the Chinese Year of the Dragon today, and wearing red is good for manifesting wealth. So, Lord knows I could use a little wealth right now, <laughs> but I'm grateful for what I have. Anyway, so I am, I'm going to finish this damn jacket today. I am determined. All I have to do is make the buttonholes ow <laughs> I keep pricking myself with the pins make the buttonholes in the facing which is what I've done here I've poked pins through from the right side so that I can see where the buttonholes need to go and what the plan what they tell you well what Gertie tells you to do is like mark them with pen or chalk now chalk won't show up on this wool and I don't want to use my heat erasable pen in case it leaves a mark so what I'm going to do is put my organza patch over the pins draw the, the the rectangle on the organza patch instead with the heat erasable pen and then sew over it and poke it through to the other side and that way I don't have to mess about with um, uh, drawing on the wall Okay, so I've hand-stitched my buttonholes. You can see a bit of the organza, but it's on the facing, so I don't really mind. I'm just, I'm just going to check my buttons will go through, because you know if they won't, we got a problem. We have a lining. We have the lining. How nice does that look? This looks really nice. I finished her, and I've got myself dressed appropriately to try her on. This dress is from Collective. I've had it a while now. How cute is this? So cute. Uh, it's a little bit small for me, but whatever. Um, anyway, I am going to try the coat on. I'm so nervous. I mean, I've been trying it on <clears throat> while I've been making it, but now it's finished and the buttons are on and it's like, oh, the nerves anyway um what's this i just did my hair i hairsprayed it to within an inch of its life and still there's some flyaways anyway let's try the coat on here she is i'm so happy i love it and there's room under here still if i wanted to wear you know more tightly for um more bulky clothing there's a tiny bit of ease in the bust and a tiny bit of ease in the waist and the hips are kind of free anyway but oh my god I love it so much oh, I'm so happy with it these buttons by the way totally the right choice let me flip you round into portrait mode and we'll see the full effect um how cute how cute I love it I feel so ladylike. I feel so like. I feel beautiful in this. Don't cry. I love it. I love it so much. It's just, there's still loads of room in here, you know? Like, I'm wearing just a dress underneath, as you, you've seen, but there's, there's plenty of room in the sleeves. The shoulders are a bit low. I could pro I could do with moving those up a bit. So maybe I do need a smaller size 
on the um, on the bodice altogether. I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with it. I love it. I think for a coat it needs some ease. Um, <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> I'm so happy. I love this colour on me as well. Oh, it's so fancy. It goes well with this dress as well. Mm. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this first part of my coat journey. I think um, the next step is to move on to my soft shell coat. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. Obviously, it's going to be slightly less bulky fabric. Um, it's still going to have a lining, but I think my buttons might need moving a little bit, actually. Looking at the wrinkling here. I can easily fix that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so happy with this. Considering the pattern didn't... Oh, I forgot to show you the lining. <gasps> the lining! Considering the pattern didn't fit and I had to grade it up, I'm very, very pleased. I had to add a lot of room into this. You know, it, I had to add 10 inches to the waist. I just want to show you the lining. How nice! How nice is that? So nice. I think it goes really well. Goes really well with the fabric. Oh, to die for. Anyway, thank you so much for being here with me on this first part of my journey. And uh, my coat journey. And I am going to be moving on to the full length coat. So with the lantern sleeves. Scary. But yes, I'm so happy. Um, please do like, share, subscribe. I would love to have you subscribe and be here with me each time I put up a video. I am trying to do more regular videos. It is difficult because you may know I am also doing a PhD and I work full time. So I try to get up as many videos as I can. Um, it's usually about one a month, but I have been a bit slow this time. Um, but yes, please do join me for part two, which will hopefully be coming up within a, a month <laughs> uh, that involves making an entire coat again so yeah um and thank you for watching if you've watched it this far mm.